Hello everybody and welcome back to Jeffy and Chihuahua. Today I'm going to be sharing with you guys some tips and some tricks for doing paint by diamonds. Before we get into it, please consider hitting that like button and subscribing. It's a free way that you can help our channel grow. And if you're interested in further supporting me as an artist, you can check out my website, jeffyandchihuahua.com, and I will leave a link in the description down below. So paint by diamonds are getting ridiculously popular because they are ridiculously fun. They're kind of like a puzzle, but at the same time, you end up with something a little bit more creative and artistic in the end, and it usually is something that you feel very, very confident to put up on your wall. For me, the one that I've completed, um, it's a vocal point in my living room, and I get so many compliments on it. Um, something you should know before you get into Paint by Diamonds is it is very time consuming. And if you're doing it to be kind of therapeutic, like some people will do puzzles just to kind of get their mind off of things, it's totally worth it. But if you're trying to get into Paint by Diamonds just because you think they look cool and you kind of want one, um, I honestly don't think I would suggest it for you. You need to really be a dedicated craft artist to enjoy doing something like this because it is so, so time consuming. I'm going to take you guys and walk you through my living room to show you the one that I completed all the way through. And that one, I want to say, took me at least 100 hours to do. And I'm not kidding. I didn't sit down and like officially time out what I was doing, but based on knowing that I would sit there for like three to five hours every time, I had a pretty good assumption that that project took well over a hundred hours to complete. I also am now working on a second one and that one is going just as slow. And so I will use that also as an example just to kind of show you guys some tricks and tips. So let's get going to the living room. So this is the paint by diamond that I have in my living room above my fire mantle. Um, it's a pretty good size. Get you guys up close. I love how you can see all of the little diamonds and I absolutely love how it sparkles. So this is what a completed one looks like and there's that huge glare on the front just because I have it in a picture frame with some glass. But overall, I just, I love the look. I love that it moves with you. Yeah, so that is a completed one that took, like I said, at least over 100 hours to complete. So this is the one that I'm currently working on. And this brings me to our first tip. Always, always, always start in the upper left-hand corner if you are right-handed. And in the upper right-hand corner if you're left-handed because what's going to end up happening as you're going through and doing your piece, your hand is going to be in the way. Um, if you start at the bottom, you're just going to always be on top of the diamonds. And that can become kind of uncomfortable after a little while. And also the sticky stuff that they use so that your diamonds will stick to the page is very sticky. But it takes so long to work on these that a lot of the times, if you just keep touching the same spot over and over again, you're going to end up knocking one of these little guys off and you're going to have to redo it. So the best way to avoid that problem is definitely just to start in the upper left hand corner or the upper right hand corner and go from there. So my second piece of advice comes in the form of storage. Because of how long these take to do, chances are you're not going to want to leave it out on your table for, say, a month or two while you're taking your time to work on it. So what I found works best to store these because they're kind of big is just one of these um, display poster boards that, like children use for projects and they're only a couple dollars you can get them at walmart walgreens and they work perfectly you can put your thing in it and then maybe like slide it underneath the couch if you're not using it that way it's completely out of the way i would suggest to leave it flat when you're storing your project which is why putting it underneath the couch is kind of in my opinion the perfect place to hide it away when you're not using it Another tip that I probably should have mentioned first is to make little baggies with your appropriate symbol on the front. 
and make sure that the symbols, you know what way is up. So with these baggies, it's very easy for me. They have the red line on the top, so I know that that is up. Um, when I first started doing these, my first batch, when I was taping on the symbols, I wasn't being as careful with it. And some of them, like W's and M's, can kind of look the same. So it's very important that you have them all going in the correct direction. And putting all of your gems into little baggies like this and putting the correct symbol on them honestly takes an hour or two when you're first getting started, but it makes it so, so, so much easier once you're doing your project to keep everything organized. And it also makes it easier for you to kind of look through your baggies. You can just kind of spread them out across your table. So my next suggestion is simply to work on small squares. I see a lot of people when they first start doing paint by diamonds get very excited and they will rip off like a whole huge section at once and just kind of go for it. The problem with that is number one, it's harder to like keep your eyes on like these teeny tiny dots and teeny tiny symbols when you're looking at such a large thing. And the other problem with that is you have a tendency to touch the sticky part more if you're working on a big square. And if you're working on a small square, you really never have to touch the sticky part. I usually end up just leaving my little container right underneath and going like that. And that's another time-saving thing to work on small squares because you have to go a lot less distance with your little tool. And you're doing so many of these squares that saving that half second every time you're doing it really does add up. Another suggestion is to not throw away the square that you're working on because like here I got mostly done with my square but I got tired and all I did was throw this back on there. The stickiness kind of holds it in place. I mean not perfectly but enough that no dusties and flyaways are going to get on that between now and when I go back to finish it. So my next suggestion is to absolutely always leave the color you're working on right in front of you and never, never, never have a second color next to you because if you have two similar colors and you pour one of them into this jar, you can really easily forget which letter you're working on and also it's really easy to accidentally pour them back into the incorrect bag. So the way I have my stuff set up is always a pile of my options and then the one color I'm working on and when I'm done with that one color, it goes back in the bag, that bag goes back to the top and that's when I will select my next color. So another thing to think about when you are getting your paint by diamond together is the size. Um, the bigger the paint by diamond is, the better it is going to look the clarity of the picture will end up being significantly better. So I've seen people do these that are like a foot by half a foot and I'm sure it's fun and and you feel like you've accomplished something a lot quicker because you can finish it in a couple days. But realistically, I think they look like crap. I just do. I think that you need to have them be at least two by three feet before the clarity of the picture really starts to come out. And I'm not sure the exact size of mine, but I've I would estimate that these are about two by three feet. Another thing to think about when you're selecting your design is the colors. Um, it's a lot more fun to work when you have all of these different colors and when you're constantly switching back and forth between the colors, which is why I chose this design. Um, I don't know if you guys can see the picture. They just give you a little idea of what it's gonna end up looking like in the corner. Um, and I was really excited for this design because of all of the blues, yellows, greens, and reds. And I'm, as you guys could see on my last one, it's absolutely gorgeous, but it's mostly grays, purples, and blues. And it got a little bit redundant feeling when I was making it because you'd be excited to be finishing up say N and you're like okay well now we're gonna go to P and P was identical and it kind of felt like that throughout most of me working on it that I was always excited to get to the next color and very rarely was the next color that different than the one I was working on and so it is a little bit more fun when you're switching up between bright colors so when you buy paint by diamond it's going to come with this little container and that is just to kind of shake out your pieces flat and then it's also going to come with a pen 
Um, the quality of the pen depends on where you're getting it from and they send out weird ones. This is another one of the pens that I have. And what's funny is this was supposed to be a premium one because of how pretty and sparkly the inside is. But these were the cheaper ones or the ones that were supposed to come with it. And I actually like these better because they have the squishy handle on them. And so if yours does not come with the squishy little handle on them, they sell these at Staples for like a dollar or two for a huge package. I highly suggest getting one of these little squishies because your hand will get tired working on the same pen for as long as you're going to be working on it. So my last tip has to do with how you finish it. The stickiness of the canvas is good enough that you can cut the edges of the canvas off and your diamonds shouldn't be falling off of the side. However, I wouldn't do that until you're ready to go into framing because as sticky as it is, it's technically still fragile. Like it holds on really, really well, but at the same time, there's only so much a sticky backing can do and you don't want to accidentally lose a diamond or two before you get it on your wall. And I highly suggest putting it into a picture frame and not just smacking it on your wall because I personally feel that if you were to just put it on your wall as is, diamonds over time would fall off. But you can get a picture frame and my, this is how I did it. Just to make sure that the diamonds always stayed perfectly in place was I got a very thin layer of batting like what they use for quilts and I cut that to the correct size and I smushed the paint by diamond. Well, there's the glass of the picture frame and then on top of that I put the paint by diamond and then I layered a very thin layer of batting and then the backboard on the picture frame and it was a little bit hard to get that backboard on and like clipped into place perfectly but because of that now I know there's a constant light pressure pushing everything forward so all of the diamonds are pressed perfectly up against the glass and they don't move and I've had that paint by diamond now for about two years and everything is still perfectly in place. So I hope this really helped you and gave you some good idea of what it's like to do a paint by diamond as well as some tips and tricks to help make it a little bit easier. It's so much fun. It really is addicting if you're a true crafter. Well, thank you guys so much for joining me. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. I will see you again soon. Bye.